Hey YouTube, this is Heiko. Haven't made a video in a while. Uh, I've been pretty busy at work, um, so didn't really get to play around much. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of projects here at home that, you know, I don't really need to make a video out of. Like, for example, how to set up my above ground pool in the backyard. It's not really very exciting. <clears throat> so what am I doing right now? I don't know if you guys remember. Back, uh, maybe half a year ago, I had a video of how to replace the seals on the manual shifter lever on the outside of a C6 transmission. There's a seal that I replaced back then. Oh, there was a second O-ring that they actually forgot to install. That's why it was leaking. There's an O-ring in there. It's the shifter shaft here in my hand. That's the one that I put in. Um, they, they, oh, actually, it's kind of, kind of cool because I have the old one. So this transmission here was once upon a time, once upon a day, rebuilt by TCI. So TCI transmissions are rebuilt for transmissions. So uh, don't let them fool you. It's not any factory new or anything. It's just a Ford case right there. It says Ford on it, on the casting. And then you have a, TCI number on there. Mine was a 411438. Uh, it's probably like the Street Fighter or something, what they call it. So this was the shifter lever shaft that TCI put in there. And yeah, as you can see, there's a little bit of some material missing. This whole section here that hooks up to my linkage. And that was missing. And that's why they put a aftermarket shifter lever on there and this aftermarket shifter lever then kind of uh, uh, inhibited me having a regular you know those two bolts here uh, right there those two screws hold the reverse and uh, neutral safety switch with this chopped off version and an aftermarket shifter lever here on this shaft i couldn't install this um, neutral safety switch and it's also the backup light switch, and that was kind of bugging me. So I replaced this. And the seal and the little ring that's in here. Why am I working on it again? That's a good question. Transmission wasn't working great when I was working on it, but I thought with a um, nice uh, transmission fluid flush, I did a full flush. I uh, disconnected the lines that go to the um, cooler. In the front, the, the transmission oil radiator, and uh, flushed it all out. Put like 12 quarts of fresh fluid in there. It, it has an extended pan, a TCI pan, and then drove it around. And then after a little while, it started slipping like nothing else. And, uh, and then one day, it made a nice loud noise clunk in the transmission. And from that moment forward, it didn't want to drive forward anymore. So now you can see that I've already completely disassembled this transmission here. All little bits and pieces. I hope I will be able to remember how to put that back together. Uh, but yeah, the cool thing is I have a couple of manuals. Here's one. Uh, rebuild and modify Ford C4 and C6 automatic transmission. This is pretty helpful. has colored pictures in it and uh, a couple tips and whatnot. And then the other one that I have is this puppy here, Haynes Ford Automatic Transmission. This is actually just for the disassembly part, the better manual. The other one is, yeah, you know, a couple steps are skipped or a couple pictures are missing, so you can't really follow along. This one here, I just followed along and ended up with this. So I want to say, the manual is pretty good. Now I'm just going to try to make a video so that I can actually remember how to put that back together. So this is an empty case. Absolute empty, nothing installed in. Oh, no, actually, I need to take that back. There's still a piston back there. This uh, piece that we're looking at there is actually the forward low piston I want to say uh, 
whatever piston it is, it's still in there. Um, uh, I can only take it out if I blow into one of the oil passages with some compressed air that will push it out. No big deal. I'm going to do that. But uh, and then this this outer bigger ring there is where those little springs sit in. And uh, a little bit different than the original, I guess, TCI used this spring retainer where the springs are permanently attached. So that's kind of nice. So they're not falling around and you have to kind of put them in place individually. Uh, so that goes in there. And then um, here's, it's an inner raise for a bearing. And this gets held in place by those uh, five bolts. And those five bolts go through five holes in the ca uh, case here from the outside. And then this inner race is also pretty much the, the part that holds this um, snap ring in place and uh, holds the spring retainer in place. Pretty simple, actually. And uh, kind of sits like this. So. And so and then uh, we have this puppy here. You know what? If I would have been smart enough, I could let me grab a rag here, put my gloves before I touch my manual. I don't want to give you wrong information, so let me uh, B20. This is already assembly. So let's go back to the disassembly part. So I at least want to give you the right information. So, yeah, so the spring retainer, springs, the clutch in arrays, and the clutch that we removed there. And that puppy is the low reverse clutch hub. So this puppy here is the low reverse clutch hub and uh, the, the clutch plates and just sitting right in there you see those grooves around there in the case and that's where those clutch um, plates lock into they are also held in place by a snap ring and then um, this inner race or they're not the inner race this low reverse Clutch hub slides right in here. You see those splines? They grab into the inside of the clutch. And uh, there is this funny little, this is actually plastic. Plastic with a little uh, bearings and uh, springs in there. And that little puppy is, what is it called? It's called the one-way clutch roller. That definitely needs to be replaced. So this puppy goes in, those go in, this goes in. Um, yeah, and then and then we're already at the point where all this goes in here. That is the reverse ring gear. Reverse ring gear that actually grabs into these teeth here. And uh, yeah, I kind of try to stack it in a way. I left all those uh, thrust, thrust washers on there. So I, I know it, uh, their location. And then uh, you sometimes can just slide it back together. And, um, and this one here, you see the planetary gear sits on there and there's a little snap ring big snap ring and a thrust washer so yeah lots of little bits and pieces and I just need to be able to remember how to put it all back together um, the reason why it came to a grinding hold literally grinding hold was uh, this thing here. See that this is kind of a rough, not very machined surface. The material that's missing is right here. 
pretty much the 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 edge with a groove for the retain or a retaining snap ring here that broke off and then all those clutch plates in here they were pretty much loose this is the forward clutch there's the forward ring gear uh, forward ring gear and the forward planetary gear they all kind of have to mingle and fit together and this snap ring pretty much holds the clutch together and since all those uh, little you know here's still one little hook left that didn't break off they all broke off and that's probably the noise that i heard the sun clunk and then it didn't want to drive forward anymore rest all looks pretty good i'm uh, I'm going to replace the forward planetary gear. Is the, the body here is aluminum and there are pretty bad grooves. And then the, the forward clutch ring gear here. There are quite some ugly grooves in there too. Right there. Everything else so far looks pretty good. So another hundred bucks in parts, I want to say. And then I can throw this back together. Of course, it's all going to get a nice wash with, um, I don't know yet. Probably we'll use some, I don't know, kerosene to wash it all off. And I'm going to blow out all those little oil and air passages. And I will inspect all the, you know, each part where like a shaft runs through. Yeah, the pump has bushings in it those are brass i want to see yeah, i assume it's brass bushings with little oil grooves i want to inspect all of those before i throw it back together i bought a bushing kit i just don't know if i have the capabilities here in my shop to push them all out because for each individual bushing you need a um, specific tool to remove under a hydraulic press and yeah, I don't know if I can come up with that. Um, I mean, I'm not too worried about this. is my, not my daily driver. What I want to achieve with this is a inexpensive rebuild of this transmission to the point where I can drive it a thousand miles a year. You know, it's not, it's not driven much. I just want it to shift right. I want the broken pieces to be replaced, the worn pieces to be replaced. If I don't find any grooves in those bushings, if there's nothing going on there, I just slap it back together. New, um, of course, new clutch, clutches, friction, and uh, steel plates. I I bought a deluxe uh, rebuild kit off of eBay. I have a bushing kit which I might not use. I um, have a complete kit of thrust washers, and in some places it's not thrust washers. They actually have. Um, I wish I could show you now. A, uh, they use Torrington bearings, which are like needle bearings. Uh, yeah, where can I show you one? Hey, we need one. Um, you, when you need one, then you can't find one. Uh, there's one right in here. This is not just a washer. This is actually a Kind of a flat needle bearing, Torrington bearing. I have a replacement kit for those as well. So I will, you know, the load bearing bits and pieces get replaced. The bushings might not. It will definitely get a new gasket kit installed. I also get a shift kit for my uh, valve body here. Um, I want to say it is a, I forgot the brand. And there are a few different shift kits out there what they do is just fix something that ford didn't get right in those uh, valve bodies it's not going to change anything very dramatically uh comes with a couple of new springs and you know a couple bits and pieces but i can pretty much reassemble all this back in there and then the last thing that i will fiddle and take uh take apart is going to be the val valve body because it has a lot of little balls and pistons and springs and I want to wash this all out to make sure that I don't get any of this metal debris back into the newly rebuilt transmission. It's probably not going to be a perfect 100% rebuild, but uh, it's probably going to be good enough.
you know, new clutches, new thrust washers, uh, new planetary gear, and then this forward clutch retainer here or uh, forward clutch assembly, the housing pretty much. You can buy that as a billet piece. It's only 800 bucks. It's not going to happen. Um, I probably will find a used part off of eBay together maybe with with uh, you know, this, this uh, ring gear. No, I keep taking it out and then I can put it back together. It's annoying. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then the servo piston here. It's going to get a new one. Already have it. And, yeah, all the seals and whatnot. I don't know if this video will actually help anyone, but uh, if you have any questions, put it in the comments. Uh, I'll be happy to answer questions if I can. Um, oh yeah, what happens when your transmission comes apart? Um, lots of gunk. You know, this is metal gunk from the forward clutch, I wanna say. Yeah, I didn't drive it much. When that happened, you know, I, I had this noise. And uh, it stopped driving forward. I put it in reverse and drove it up my driveway and then parked it. And then worked on this here. Anyways, I I hope I'll get it back together. I'll uh, make another video once that happens or when I reassemble. Maybe I'll show you the reassembly part. Actually, uh, the disassembly, if you just want to take it apart, it's pretty simple. It's really pretty simple. Um, you know, a couple of snap rings here and there. Uh, certain direction order of how you have to do it to get it apart. But those manuals are pretty good. Another problem that I have with my transmission here is the case. So the, the torque converter that's still sitting down there. Is that torque converter? That's also the TCI, aftermarket stuff. Um, they have little balancing weights on them. This here is a 15 gram, or is that a, a 15 gram balancing weight? Apparently that came off while the car was running, the torque converter spinning, and it hit a hole through the bell housing. Now I have to find out if I need to find a new case. Sometimes they are like, you know, 100 bucks, 150 bucks, or if I can weld this. Where? Let's say get it welded by someone who knows how to do that. I'll take it to a transmission shop here in town and then find out. But yeah, that's what I'm working on. Tomorrow I have to go back to work. So for the next three days, nothing is going to happen. It's just going to be sitting here. And then my memory is going to fade. And then it's going to be really complicated to put that back together. But I hope you guys like those videos. Um, please comment, like, and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you.